Hey now, what is up everybody? My name is Mike Brown, aka Review King MB, and I'm gonna try something different. I do want to get back to my originals versus remake thing that I was doing. I will get back to that, but something else I I just I've been thinking about for the longest time. It's a little thing called buy or sell, where I'm gonna present a movie. And it can either be my idea or maybe something that was supposed to happen but never did happen. And in this case, it's my idea. It's something that it's not like the greatest or most original idea. It's just something that makes sense. Like, this needs to happen. But I want you guys to decide that. If you like it, then tell me that you buy it. If you think it sucks, then sell it. That's fine. I won't be offended. So what I am pitching is a Batman Beyond movie. For anybody who doesn't know what Batman Beyond is, Batman Beyond was an animated show, came out in the late 90s, and in this show, Bruce Wayne is older. In his 60s, he was still being Batman, but he had a heart attack, and he almost resulted to using a gun for the first time. That's when he knew he had to retire. That's when he knew he had to give up cut to even more years later so like batman bruce wayne is about late 70s early 80s like he's old he's really old and that's where we meet a new kid terry mcginnis who finds the the bat cave and bruce sort of trains this kid to be the next generation's batman and this is just something that i always thought was a cool idea something uh, different and original, especially with the Batman character, to take it to a new place. Now imagine doing this in a movie. And if you're wondering, well, what about the Ben Affleck movies? I'm very much looking forward to the Ben Affleck movies. We can still do Batman Beyond at the same time. Two separate universes, two separate worlds. We don't have to confuse people. Hopefully audiences are smart enough to understand that it's not connected. Because the person that I want to be cast as old man Bruce is Michael Keaton. And yes, if you're asking, does that mean this is connected to the old Tim Burton movies? Yes. Doesn't mean Tim Burton has to come back. He can come back. Uh, I mean, lately, it's you got to be worried about whether or not you want him to come back. But... If he doesn't come back, that's fine. You can still have it in that world. You can it, It's a futuristic world. And, and Michael Keaton is the best age to do it right now. And, and like this would be, for me, a dream come true. As far as who you cast as Terry McGinnis, the new Batman, it to me it doesn't fully matter. It's not fully important because you're not going to sell this movie on this young actor who's playing the new Batman. You're going to sell it on this new Batman concept and Michael Keaton being back. Also, just how cool is it going to be if you have the beginning part of Keaton just for the beginning of the movie back in a Batman costume. Maybe even have him say, I'm Batman. And one last time, as far as actors, though, Aaron Tveit, T-V-E-I-T. Now, I've never seen him in anything. I haven't. I actually looked online and looked at other people's choices for, for Terry McGinnis. I want an unknown. I want somebody that at least I don't know. And this guy looked like he fit the part, looked the part. Now, Terry McGinnis' story is that his father was killed by a gang. And in this future... There is a gang called the Joker Gang. Now, how awesome is that to just, if you have a gang of, of people who were obsessed with the Joker, in this case, if it is Michael Keaton, it would be Jack Nicholson's Joker. They were obsessed with him. They, they're, this gang is a tribute to him. They maybe dress like the Joker or have face paint. Like, I think you can make that interesting and kind of creepy. But eventually find out that the gang was hired to kill Terry's father. And the person who hired them is this character called Derek Powers. And Derek Powers is this new big time CEO type guy. He's now ro running Wayne Enterprises and he's crooked, obviously. And who do you get as an actor to play a Derek Powers? Kevin Spacey. 
And now some people are thinking, well, here, you played Lex Luthor. Well, that was like 10 plus years ago, first of all. Second of all, I think he could nail this character. I think he can really just play the smarmy, slimy type guy. And I want him in a good movie again. I just saw him in that stupid cat movie, Nine Lives. No, he's better than this. No! And I want this to be a trilogy. I want this to be a trilogy, three movies, because that's what Hollywood wants, right? It's a trilogy. So in the sequel, I want to introduce Kim Basinger back as Vicky Vale. And I know not everybody loves uh, Vicky Vale or maybe Kim Basinger. At least at the time, she was younger. She wasn't as experienced and she screamed a lot and all this stuff. But this would be great. This would be great to finally bring back somebody that, at least in this timeline, was, was a love of Bruce. And I think if you reconnect them, reunite them, Kim Basinger still looks good. And I think she could pull this off as far as a plot or the villain for the second movie. I want to focus on the Society of Assassins. Now, this is a group who... I guess you can compare them to the League of Assassins, but they're more intense. The main killer, she gets hired by them to kill, it could be Bruce Wayne. I want her played by Sophia Butella. If you saw Kingsman or if you saw Star Trek Beyond, you know this actress and she could definitely pull that character off. Now her story is that she's with these assassins, but she decides not to complete her mission, not to kill who she's supposed to kill. And if you do that, if you don't complete your mission in this group, then now they're they're after you. Obviously, Terry McGinnis Batman will help her to fight this duo off. The third movie, you can have the beginning with, with Terry McGinnis Batman going up against uh, a villain like the Spellbinder. Now, he's not going to be a villain for the whole movie. He'll just be like the beginning. And it's just fun to throw in a villain that some people might recognize, some people might know, but maybe not the strongest villain to hold their own movie. And the reason why he won't be the villain for the whole movie is because I want the third villain, the last villain in the last movie to be Derek Powers becoming Blight. And if you've seen the Batman Beyond show then you know who blight is you know how powerful he is you know how cool he looks just that glowing effect that green glow i would love to see that in a movie and because it is in the future you can make it look trippy you can make it look out there and and seeing kevin spacey become that through whatever experiment or whatever thing that goes wrong whatever you have to do to get it done you get it done i want vicky vale to get killed uh, probably in the second movie. The third movie, though, I want to bring back and reintroduce Michelle Pfeiffer as Selena Kyle. Older Selena Kyle, and this time she does not die. This time, old man Bruce ends up with old Selena Kyle. I just think that would be a perfect bookmark ending for this Batman Beyond trilogy. Once again, you tie it back to the Burton movies with Selena Kyle and, and her and Bruce and their dynamic together, their relationship together, and how much that worked. There can be no other thing that I want right now than to see an ending like that, to see a trilogy like this. So guys, once again, let me know in the comments below, what do you think of my pitch? Do you buy it? Do you want to see a Batman Beyond movie or a Batman Beyond trilogy? Do you think this sounds cool? Are there things that you would change about it? Or do you sell it? Do you think it's a dumb idea? Stick with the Ben Affleck movies, which we can, we can have both. But do you, are you not interested? Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Later.